The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hello, everyone. Basil Chapman, if I can just get this chart to show. I wanted to show you something as we start off the day. This is Monday, the 22nd of August. Uh, the the S&P uh, futures down 63 at 41.67. I wanted to show you something. You can see this is a 10-minute E-mini S&P 500 September futures contract. Um, I had questions over the last week. Uh, every once in a while, could you actually show us how you draw trend lines? Because this is what I do, especially in my my. Uh, all day webinars and uh, whenever I'm teaching something. It's such a simple uh, technique. I'll first of all show you the way I drew it earlier on. Look, um, a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. So this is a 10 minute chart. I, I will show that and I'll show it right now. I believe this is it. Let's hope it is. Yeah, I think there's the one. No, it's not. Ugh. It doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're looking at is, see this 200 period exponential moving average right here. There's a one minute. There's a 10 minute E mini chart. It it just hangs around it for for hours, hours. Goes to peak, deep pulls back, goes below it, goes over it. Next thing, it breaks down. Right. Well, I drew in this channel line, and what is a channel line? Basically, it's two parallel lines. Right. That makes a channel. More importantly, I drew it from the top and I went to the top and I did something it was not a hundred percent because I gave it just a little bit of room so it's a trend line that touches the candle highs and it goes to one important one later on and it goes to this one at about 9 a.m. Uh, 9 a.m. on Friday I believe it was yes okay and then it continues continues and look at this. Look how that line, I'll make it, as I usually do, I'll make it green, and then I'll make it red. I mean, there's just nothing to the, you don't even need all the stuff. I'm just doing this to demonstrate. Um, and that showed you the resistance and the breakout level. But at the bottom, I loved it when it's a parallel line and it hits perfectly. All the lower lows, or well, not all the lower lows, but a chunk of the low lows. And at the same time, what it's telling you is that is an important line. Now, I like to add the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone, or in this case, the repellent zone. So this is green right above it. And where are we now? Look at this. It continues and continues, and it's starting. And we're talking about something this is now. I don't know how many hours. This is given hours, right? So we start from right here. And what was the time? Uh, 23, that's 11 o'clock on the 18th. So the 18th was, when was the 18th? That was on Thursday. Thursday, it starts, that was the high. This is a 10-minute chart. I don't have to tell you how many 10-minute bars there are going into this moment. They're in right at this particular, <laughs> right this second. Um, it's a lot. So what we've done is we had four bars after the failure before of going higher and holding higher. It went just to a peak B and it arched over, went to a lower low. Now, all of a sudden, in this first 45 minutes of trading, you've had and the intense sell-off follow-up from last night, the intense follow-up from this morning uh, rally attempts that failed very quickly. Now you get into the point where some people say, aha, we've been selling off for a few days. This is where I'd like to at least attempt along in some of the positions, maybe in the S&P, and that's where this will be beneficial. But the way I read this is that the MACD is still negative. Histogram is still negative. The stochastics under 20% is 16%, so it's had a little bit of a rally of the, the low that was just a tad low about, uh, I'd say, by I am saying 14%. On balance volume is not showing anything. So I don't think we're quite ready yet. But what will happen is it'll be the first time 
if the E mini trading at 4164 starts to trade at 4158, it'll be the first time that this very narrow declining. What what would it say? Let me just uh, lean over here and see if I can get. It. Oh, I'll try to get it. Okay, let me get my. I, I wish I, I for for 20 years I've been wanting to uh, uh, call uh, Trade Station and say, hey, come on. Why don't you why don't you make a percentage on a on a trend line? It's so easy. You can do it in split in a split second. If I if I press a dot here and I draw a trend line like this, all I want is as it's going down, it's got a percentage. But, uh, I've seen the charts before that they have the percentage. Well, I don't know why that maybe they do. I should find out. Anyway, in this particular instance, the angle is oh, I haven't got the right protractor. And I'm going to do something very close. Oh, let's call it about a a twelve percent. If that a twelve percent decline, right? And we're at a cuspy mo moment right now. Why? Because if it starts to trade underneath, now you've created this inside track repellent zone plus the nine and fourteen period moving average of forty one seventy one and forty one uh, seventy four as resistance levels and that means you have to climb all the way and not only that i usually like to put at a certain moment i say you know what i'm going to put in a midpoint line because that midpoint line is very often very important in a channel so there's the midpoint line and it kind of coincides with that 4174 level so it's if the s p at any point between now and the next hour and a half can actually trade in the 4182 area it says ha huh, Maybe it's going to go towards the upper part of this trading band. It's just a trading band. Think of it as a, a glass tube that you can see through, and you're watching the worms inside walking around. I don't know. Anyway, this is what I look at. It's a very simple technique. I was going to do something else, but I, I have, I'm running out of time because there's a lot to do. So I had a couple of questions, and I'm going to do this very quickly. Look, the Dow's down 426 at 33,280. So... We've been long, starting off right on the doji candle low of the 17th of June. We've been buying the diamonds, and we take some money off, and we try to keep a core position. We've still got a core from 20, 2020, the 23rd of March, um, that we've, we're still holding. And basically what I'm saying is, it's, to get down to the 29.653 low of, the, of June the, the 6th, of June the 17th, it would take... A lot of bad news. How we come out of this bad news right now with the, you remember the silent doji candle, Chapman wave silent doji candle that I spoke about after the high, that's not an F, that's an FC, that's now an F, confirmed F top, all right, at 34,281. That's a very, very fine uh, rally attempt to 11%, I can't remember offhand. Um, maybe it's a little more because we've, We've got profits. Now, what I did is, for subscribers, I should have done it on Friday. I had it all written down. I didn't do it. I, I did. We did get a short position uh, off, and we've taken uh, all of our, on the first position of our three times long QQQs, we're out of that position, and I believe we've now been stopped out of our semiconductor uh, three times long. Fabulous, fabulous gains, taking lots of little bits off. Uh, that's the way we work it, and we still got that second position in the QQQ. So the Dow is getting close to the 33,000. What is that? 80, I think it is. 30. Okay. Yeah, it's getting close to the, the key support of 33,200 in the um, in the 200 period moving average. I'll be back, and we'll talk about what should come up. This Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so we're back. So let's just go through this. What I've got here on the back screen behind here, as you can see, is this is with the Chapman Wave automated Chapman Wave notations of uh, resistance and support. Damn, it's the wrong way around, but that's uh, the way it is. Green for resistance and red for support. But you can see here, look, here are the cues. There are no support levels. That always makes me a little nervous. And in fact, the reason why I want you to stay long for so long is that on the upside for a little while, we didn't have any resistance levels. Now we have, look at this, cluster in the 331, 332 area on the QQQs, got the exact high. Look at the uh, Dow, INDU, the Dow had Look at those, 33,917. It went just above 34,000. Remember, I said 34,000 could be a key right here. It could be the millennium uh, resistance level. And here we are at 33,246. Uh, 33, and there are no, even the 10 minute chart, uh, it does. It has 33,472. We've already gone below that. And you've got the 120 minute chart with a whole bunch of uh, levels, and we're below those. So I, I'm always a little nervous. It takes a few days before the technicals, as I, I dictated them to um, Herb, who did this particular software program for me, um, before they can kick in. Uh, so we've got a couple of days. Even if there's a bounce, we've got a couple of days before I can actually see support levels. Look at the SP. SP went right to. The uh, there is 42.65 level and broke above it a little bit and then turned around and now it's down at the uh, 41.59 level and we haven't got any key support levels. Look, it's nothing, it's gone through them all. So that always makes me a little upsetting, uh, 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 nervous, I should say, just in terms of having a, a visual icon and number. I don't have that. And uh, IWM, same thing, done very nicely. 201.01 .01 was the uh, resistance level. It went a tad above. And now it's down to the 191 level. And we've got some support levels at 194 and 192.45. So we're just a little bit underneath that one in the 120 minute chart. And you can see the monthly now has a ton a 176, 166. And we're trading at 191. I don't want to see. 176 to 166. All right, let's get out of this. Let's go back to our story. And our story is that um, within the context of this cup formation, we went to the left side high that I was uh, targeting 
that was in the 30, uh, 33,900 level. And in fact, I can't remember exactly what it was. It was 34,117. We went above it by 34,281 by 160 points. And now we're right sitting just about on the 200 period moving average. So that's the reason why I said to subscribers, we've been for, for a week now, we've been taking money off our longs, uh, some fantastic gains. So I have a couple that are still showing good strength. I may, um, maybe if I. I don't know if I'll talk about it. Anyway, the S&P, so th this is a question that came in. Um, can you look at the gap in the spider? Well, we're into the gap right now. The spider, the SPY, had a, had a trade on the 9th of August between 412.75 and 410.22. But the next day, it gapped up over the 200-period moving average with a low of 416. So where are we now? We're at 415.27. I suspect we are going to fill that, and we'll probably go a little bit lower. The 50-period exponential moving average is at 407. Seven points in the spies is a lot. I mean, that is a lot. That's almost 70 points in the uh, S&P. So I'm not ignoring that that's a possibility. So the question came in, could you quickly show that 10-minute uh, chart? 10-minute chart, have I got it right here? And there it is. So now we've gone underneath. And that's what I was saying. I didn't see any support because the MACD histogram is still expanding. But now at 13% in the stochastic, the on-balance volume, I, I, I only use on-balance volume as overbought and oversold. I don't use the SPY. I don't use the MACD. And the, on the SPY, it's getting a little bit oversold. So it's getting ready for a little bit of a pop at 4160. The whole area of 4169 to 4172, that's going to be a big test. But isn't it remarkable how long a narrow trading band can last, in this case with a slightly descending? I wonder where my other protractor is. It's just so much easier. It falls in. This one's so one of the CVS ones. This one has a big hole in the middle. So I'm, I'm just guessing. I'm going to try it again. Protractor. I'm thinking that is parallel, and I'm thinking that it goes from zero. Oh, wrong way around. Let's do it that way. Ah, there we are. Okay. Yeah, 10 degrees, 11 degrees, and now it's underneath. And that's um, very negative. And you can see the, um, look, it's, it's pink. That means that the nine is under the 14 period moving average. So this is exactly the area that it better start showing some kind of support. All right, let's get out of this. I had a bunch of questions. Let's get to them. Uh, let's go in order. So I've, I've been saying that I love the action when you use time frames. I love the action of the Dow pushing above the 200 period moving average in the daily, getting to this leg F. Now we call it with a silent doji, a peak F. And it helped the weekly chart for the very first time give a signal that I can say, I believe now that the this is the spy I'm looking at. I'll, I'll, I'm not going to change right now. The spy is in a, at a, in a buy signal. Three reasons. The stochastic's at 85%. The MACD has expanded and crossed positively. The price has gone above a peak A and is still expanding. And the nine-period exponential moving average in the weekly chart has flipped to positive. It's not a buy mode yet. I don't have the evidence of a whole week of being above the nine, being above the 14 period to go stay green. And that's a key element. And I don't have the on-balance volume rallying as it should. This on-balance volume at about 20, of course, it, the right side is not related to the price here, but I'm just giving it an ex as an example, um, is, is okay. But it's not great, and it's not, it's not even good. It's just okay. So that just says to me it's the start. My feeling is that the 400 area is going to be critical because we could give back um, maybe a third, maybe even, I don't really want to see it, but maybe a half of the gain and then start another move to the upside. Uh, that's all I'm saying right now. Okay, so that's the, that's the same thing. That, so the question was, is this a time to be buying and to be adding to my to my long position on the Dow? And my answer is no. What I've done is I've gone with the subscribers. We're still long the core positions from our, our entry points in the diamonds, but we've also got to to counteract any downturn. We've got the start of the DOG because the DOG is fresh and the diamonds have already started taking off. The weighting is slightly more negative. 
if there is a bounce, and my assessment is that we should still have another, at least one more leg down for a trough C, or maybe even a D in the daily chart, I might then add uh, a two times long, a short or a three times short on the Dow because I'd like to maximize. I should have done it. I, I talked about it and everything. I never did it when we had the doji candle close on Wednesday, uh, on Thursday. It was just a perfect time. Um, and that gives you the cushion. I would have been, we would have been short within 250 points, uh, 280 points of the, of the high, most recent high. That gives you a really good cushion. Now it's going to be a little tougher. So yes, I'm looking at the weekly charts improving. Even if you look at the QQQ, which only uh, went slightly above the daily 200 period moving average and only broke out but didn't close more than once above the weekly chapbook inside track. I'm staying even there. I think it's internal strength. I'll be back in a moment. That's a trap. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back, and now the Pacus are down 680 through 16. Don't support the, the looking at all the technicals. You see the, in the green here, the nine period exponential moving average is, is sharply moving down, but it's still well above the 14. That gives you a little time to say, well, if it's going to cross negative, we can still got more to go. Okay. So the answer is no. I don't think this is the time to be adding to your down positions. Um, most importantly, you will have a chance maybe in the next few days, and then you can even scale in making it a split position. Uh, but I, I don't think there's actually a rush right now to get into it. Maybe a little later in the week, we'll see what happens. When is it? Is it Friday when there's a, when Powell uh, has that meeting? Uh, I, I I just wait. I wouldn't be in a rush. And even if you miss a bounce, I think, okay, my, my, my assessment here is that 
We've got a sharp pullback unfolding, which is absolutely necessary, very important, number one. Number two is, I think there's going to be a pretty decent rally, but I would not be surprised if once again, they just go towards maybe just barely above the 200 period moving average, and then we get a deeper correction. So I'm anticipating this is a very volatile period. I don't see any rush to do that, and there's even no rush to actually go into short positions because I think you'll have time. There'll be bounces that you can do that, and then you've got to be careful because I think you'll be ready for another big, bigger rally. Okay, next question I had was number one. That was that, number one. Number two was XLE. Uh, a bunch of people, I'm mean, treated as a generic question. A lot of people ask me about S&P, Select Energy, Spider Fund. Oh, let me just do this so that I can see if any questions in the uh, Tiger YouTube. Uh, so YouTube, there we go. Uh, I don't see anything yet. AMC stock price. Yeah, okay, there'll be questions coming in, but right now I've got a uh, little room to talk. So XLE is the S&P Select Spider Energy Fund. Trading down a dollar forty-seven to seventy-seven ninety-eight. So, I believe that this weekly chart. See this beautiful up channel. Well, this up channel has been going for a long time. I've also got um, notations of uh, this is this is the. Yeah, okay, those are fib, fib notations. And we're kind of stuck in the middle of, of, of those. In fact, I'm going to take them off because it doesn't fit with my eye right now. What I am looking at is the weekly chart is suggesting that the that the, it's very selective in the XLE and that there's a very good chance. You can see this weekly chart here. Let me just move it back to where it normally sits in the middle of the monthly on the right and the daily on the left. Well, you see what's happened here in the daily chart. You see the rally and the stochastic flat at 89%, which is very good. Relative strength, the gray line is okay at about 53%. On balance volumes, oh, not good. It's just okay. But you see the way the 9 is sitting above the 14, but the rally has stalled sideways. And this is in energy. This is in an area that was well, going to the June 8th high. We're into 93.31 in a very quick time frame. Look, the same kind of time frame that we've got now, but back in May, late April to, to the June high, look how quickly it went to a D, and then it didn't wait more than a day, and it started another move up within five days. It climbed above D, went to E, and then an F, a fractional, a tiny plus sign, doji. I mean, when I teach these courses, we're always just absolutely, eyes pop right out and say, Look at that major turn from 93 down to 65, a tiny doji candle. I only use about three candles, four, four candles in the in the uh, Japanese candlestick formations. Uh, at least three of them are my own making. That is the techniques of my own making. One is entirely my own making. That is the, the Chapman Wave Roman candle. And it has a specific function as well as the Chapman Wave silent doji candle when it's just above a turning point. So in this particular instance, that tiny Joji candle gave you a run all the way down to the low uh, around about July the 16th, 17th, and then there was a sign in Doji candle and it moved up. And now look what you've done, you've stalled. So the answer to the two questions, one is, I, I, I may as well just read it if I can find it here. Yeah? Is this the question here? Yeah. Uh, good morning. I'm a subscriber to your newsletter and also attended your recent uh, webinar and appreciate the time you take to go over the markets. I currently took a small position in the XLE, a starter position, as I believe it is headed higher with a price target of 84 in the short term. And I'm going to say I agree with you, but not as short term. I think it's short. I'm going to say more towards intermediate term. I still believe that there's buying pressure in the XLE. So let's just get that out the way. Why I purchased some shares, I also took a couple of options as well with an expiration of September 16, 2023. I think you mean 2022 because my September is Friday the 16th. So I, I think that you just miswrote 22 and put 23. They are the 79 options as I wanted them to be in the money in case I'm wrong and the XLD does not close above 79.40 by Monday, so I, that whole 23 thing gets thrown out. If you're a short-term trader, you're not even, I mean, 
2023 is like a lifetime, so we don't have to even think about that. And it's at 77.83, and it's Monday. So by now, you're probably out of the position. But I do have it as a, as a peak C. Now, this is something I'm going to discuss. It should be Friday in the uh, Chapman Wave. Uh, they, this is called Technical Friday, where I go through some of the techniques in the Chapman Wave. You see this peak B here that went to a high of 78.66. And you see this little peak right here, which is also it's a gray B because it's underneath that peak B. You made a little peak A and then you got it. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, that 78.54 high, which is just under the 78.66 high, which is 12 cents, I have wanted to build a technique, and I've done it over the years, but it's just for me. I don't talk about it. I don't, it's just something I've experimented with. But believe me, it is potent. And what I've wanted to do over the years, I use the phantom peak. Now, th those of you who know and see me how I use the phantom peak, if there's just a fractional, a double top at a, at a peak C or a B or something like that, but everything about it says this is in a buy mode, or if it's even at an A where there are two parallel highs, I tend to say I'm going to be a little ahead of the game, and I'm going to call this a peak A, but it's a phantom peak. So I make it red to just show that I've, this is not the Chapman wave. This is the an alternative count, an artistic count. You never, There's no computer that's ever going to be able to program that. Well, with this B, I, I spent some time on this last week, and I said, you know, I, I would love – I can see what's happening here. I bet that this is going to turn into a phantom peak C. In other words, it never did get to C. But all the technicals are suggesting that there's a chance that I'm going to get to a D in the XLE, and then it's going to pull back. So with that in mind, I'm saying to you, even if it's not a phantom peak C, but a real peak, peak C over here, I don't think we're going much higher at this particular point um, in the XLE without further consolidation. In other words, I think that the upside is somewhat limited, and there could be a fractional peak C, C1, and then it pulls back. But I think we're in a digestive area. So I am going to say, Joe, that I, I like everything about your, your plan and you've said – uh, I wanted to them to be in the money in case I'm wrong. The XLE does not close above 79.40 on Monday. I would stop out of the position with a small loss. What do you think? I know it doesn't cut the price of I'm a day trader. So then I, when I'm wrong, preservation of capital. I do everything you say. So I'm not, I'm going to open it out right now. But I think it's limited upside. I would short sure the You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50.
Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. So I want you to go to the naked chart, the E mini uh, at the two minute chart, and just show you. Um, I mentioned uh, the channels, right? So what happened is, I want to type this right Yes, there we go. Uh oh, got it. Okay. So we'll just put that over there. So we had the 200 p the sorry, the 10 minute, and the 10 minute had that channel. And I said, this is the this is the first time that we're looking at the channel if it's gone below. And we're going to look at just the simple things like the candle, like the nine period moving average, all this, all this stuff. And it says this is the first time that there could be a, a, at least a more sustained, sizable uh, rally rather than just a bounce, a flat one, then starting to come back again. And then within that context, I took the naked chart. This is a two minute chart. And I drew in a trend line that said, look, I just take the tops of the trend line. So in my uh, in my webinar the other day, I discussed channel lines, and I said in a channel line, it, it, sometimes if you come off a low very quickly or off a high very quickly, you can't take the actual top because the the real starting point is just visually so obvious that you'd be you'd be going in the wrong place. Look, if I took this top right here in the in the uh, two minute chart, right here. This is where I'd be. Well, that, that doesn't do anything for me. But this, the second peak, if I go down, I say, great, now it's broken. That support level. And within channel lines to the bottom, the trap wave inside track propellant line, if I just took from the low here, whoops, I, mean, I didn't do that correctly. If I do that to here, yeah, let me get rid of all these channel lines. I'll just do this live. Uh, remove, remove. Okay, this particular channel run right here produces not a parallel line. It's it's different to the parallel line because this is the one that I'm talking about right now. This produces a chapter wave inside track with four hits. Look, oh well, one. There's the second bar, two, three, and the fourth one says, oh, look, now the bounce has gone above that trend line resistance. So then what I do is I do a measured move from left side to right side, and it says round about uh, 10.56, if this is going to go on a strength and it doesn't break the 41.55 support, um, there's a chance that by, what did I say, by about 10.56, 10.56, that's about another... Uh, about another 10 minutes, if it can pierce the high that was made right there, it can go to the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line that I always draw in right there. So this is just showing you some of the techniques. And um, it's just nice that if you have, you have the opportunity, and this is a two-minute chart, so I do have time, to be able to draw. I even try to draw it on one minute, but I'm doing one-minute charts. I try to draw this in. And I try to do everything. In fact, what I've started doing now, I'm not going to do it right now, is put in the exact price and time. And that would be 
4165.25 by 10. 56. All right, we'll come back to that. It could be, it could be a mess. I, it doesn't matter. I've done my homework, and that's what it says. So now, the, so XLE, I'm saying I like it. I don't think the, the next big move in the XLE is just ready yet, although it's, it's doing a nice sideways consolidation. I would say within the next three, maybe five sessions, there should be an attempt at a breakout, but it's absolutely important for the XLE on a short-term basis to be holding 75. It's at 78 right now. Certainly close under 75 says you've got even more time than you think. But if it holds here and it even touches uh, the low today, so far 77.48, yeah, as long as it holds the 77s in the next two days and attempts to get to 79, it says, yep, it could, it could start a move towards a leg D to the upside. Even then, from all the action on the left, it says to me, the XLE, the S&P Energy Spider Fund, is taking its time. And I think Oxy was one of those that's in it. I should have checked over the weekend and had that spectacular move to a peak C, a leg C on Friday. So that was really a big influence. And look at, oh, well, I, I drew this in on another chart and I forgot to write down what it was. What a silly thing to do. Okay, enough with these. Let's get out uh, of this. Yeah, preservation of capital in this particular time frame is really important. Next thing is, I uh, hope all is well with you. Um, have been trading boil and UNG and finally getting to some natural gas stocks. Uh, have not. Well, please look at some of the names attached. Have not run Chapman Wave analysis on them. I'm just using the IBD filter. Well, I have the IBD uh, written out right here. I did that on Thursday, and I did some of them on Friday that I did live. So you have a coincidence uh, that you've got looking at, you're looking at some of the charts that I was looking at. I did all 50. I finished them up over the weekend. Many I had already done ages ago, but I somehow lost the information. But what I am looking at here is, so your question, let's go ENPH. ENPH, that's N phase, I believe. N phase energy, uh, made a peak F top, okay, like a quadruple top, and now it's pulling back, but it is, it's, down a dollar sixty-seven at two eighty-two point oh three. So you can see that even from the shorter term, me medium term, and long term of something like end phase, which has been absolutely a spec, even just from a month ago, uh, July the eighteenth, a little over a month ago, it's gone from the hundred and um, what was that low? On the fifteenth of July, the low is one hundred seventy-five point zero zero, round number. Look at this. It hits 300, 305. Now it's trading at 281. Just a digestive phase. So I like it. Where would I add to it? I prefer to have the weekly chart, one more week on the weekly chart before I can actually give you a, a number that I feel confident in. But unconfident, I'd say that this gap right here, this gap of the 250, uh, 257 to... 263 area. So 263 to 257, it depends on the, the deepness of the closing price because it's already green even though it's down. So at 272 this morning, someone said, hey, I love the stock. I'm buying it. I want to see how it closes. If that fails, if in other words, uh, if it goes below 279 at the close, then I think I can say that the gap is probably going to be filled in. Uh, you had some others. Uh, let's see, DQ, I had already notated DQ because it's on the on the 50 list. This is in a sell mode in the daily. It's not yet quite a sell signal in the weekly. Deco, uh, new energy company. It was up in the 120. I think it just missed the 130. Let me just double check on that. Um, yeah, 130, 33 was the high back in February of 2021. So it's been a big consolidation. But look at the weekly chart. This weekly chart is making a pattern, not one of my favorite patterns because it failed at a peak D under the previous high, but it is holding in this rectangle formation. I suspect if DQ, trading at 61.96 down 1.11, takes out on a closing basis the 56 support level of the 29th of June, July, it's going to make another um, cup formation, but like a cup and handle. And that says that can be a little deeper. The deeper it is, the less strength it has. The strength it is, in time and in price, the greater the chances of retesting that high that was made recently in the 79th. So that's DQ. 
I think I've got one more T A L O. I'll look at that. T A L O. Talo, yes. Talo Inc. I'll be back with that. That's training at 90. A little bit better. Training. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So one of the things that you've got to understand is that when the, the tide changes, you want to be trading the, uh, the, the direction of the tide. Let me show you this chart. This is not what I was planning to do here, but let me just do it right now if I can. Okay, there it is. So this is a chart that I like to show subscribers every once in a while. If I'm doing the wrong thing, I put this chart up. It's from my CD book, uh, Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology. I show this pattern. You see the way the price is moving up? You see the arrow? Where's the arrow going? The arrow is going down. Does that look right? No, it looks wrong. And on the way down here, it should be red. This is the arrow that should be red and going down. And this is the arrow that should be green and going up. So you can, and we did this on the way down, going to the low of the, uh, was it June the 17th? We did trade all the, the bounces. And actually, many of them were five, 600 point bounces. But I was complaining because I should have had kept a, a, a down a short position from the very top and just not worried and then switched when I got the major buy signal. Um, but you can trade that. But the main thing is you want to trade the tide. So in the in the, in the tide, if you look at this um, short term uh, uh, chart right here, look. We ran up. There's only two fighting patterns. One's the cup, one's the arch. And it couldn't break above. It couldn't even get to a leg B. And that's negative. And that says this 10-minute this chart of this, this 
incredible decline. Uh, narrow decline says this is going to be real tough. 41.63 now is really tough to support and, and hold. Okay, now a couple of quick things. The gap that you're talking about, Paul, from June, I don't see that yet in the S&P as anything that I'm even thinking of going down to. That was the, 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 the low, the doji candle low of the 17th. That gap, you've got to go through many gaps first before I can even co uh, I include that. Then a quick question here. Yeah, I don't know if it's a quick question. Just as we go to break up to the end of the show. Uh, oh, get it. I put it. I put it. Monday, Monday. Oh, there it is. Uh, Greg wants to know about CYN and CYN. I'm just saying it's all the very valid 148 spec for self drive vehicle solution. I'll do more of this tomorrow and I'll try to find my others in the category. Yeah, this is this is something that you